Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I will be kicking off a brand new mini series of various art related products and today I will be talking about the Zen Art Bullet Journal. I recently joined a group called the Creative Testers Club where I am asked to try out different art supplies or art related products in exchange for a review. If that is something that you are interested in doing as well, I will put more information down below in the description if you want to check that out. Before I begin, I also want to make full disclosure that I received this bullet journal for free and was provided compensation for leaving a review. However, I am not asked to say certain things or omit certain things during my review, so rest assured that everything that I discuss in this video is of my own experiences and opinions, and I will do my best to be as thorough as possible when discussing both the positive and the negative aspects of this bullet journal. In this video, I will also have a drawing portion included, but I will also upload a separate drawing video featuring that footage, and it will be edited differently to make it more appropriate as a speed paint video, especially because this is a review video, so unfortunately, everything that is art related will have to be sped up a lot just to make it more appropriate in the context of a review video. I also want to give you guys a heads up that there is a lot of information that I will be discussing and because this is a voiceover that was done after filming, um, everything that I say is probably not going to match up with what's on screen so if necessary I may put comments or notes on screen uh, if there are things that I want to point out that I am not saying at that specific time. So to start off with, again, this is the Zen Art Bullet Journal. It sells for $17.95 on Amazon in US dollars. It is in the size B5, which is roughly 6.9 inches by 9.8 inches, and it weighs 15.7 ounces or just under a pound. The cover is eco-friendly and biodegradable, and it features the Zen Art logo on the cover right in the center. The cover is made of PU faux leather and it is vegan friendly, soft and flexible and it comes with rounded edges. This bullet journal also comes in five colors. I was asked to review the turquoise color but it also comes in French rose, lavender blue, vermilion orange and zesty lime. The edges have a printed Japanese motif so with the turquoise color you get foxes printed along the edges but they also have dragonflies, sea waves, plovers and bamboo as well as cranes. There are 80 sheets or 160 pages in this bullet journal and the pages are acid free, ivory colored and non-bleed and it claims to be fountain ink friendly and it is 100 GSM which is thicker than the Leuchtturm 1917 bullet journals which are 80 GSM but it's not as thick as the 160 GSM watercolor friendly no show through bullet journals that are on the market. You get four indexing pages and 154 numbered pages, and this is a dot grid bullet journal with the very standard five millimeter spacing. Other features of this bullet journal is that it has a 180 degree lay flat design and it is thread bound. There is a back pocket with label stickers that are included and you also get two ribbon markers of different colors as well as an elastic band closure to keep the journal closed if you are transporting it between locations. So one of the first things that I noticed when I was asked to review this product is the edge design. I feel like this is very unique since most bullet journals or even journals in general are usually plain or they might have gilded edges like gold or silver gilding. But I think this is the first time where I see like an actual design printed along the edges. So that was something that I thought was really cool and made this bullet journal very different from a lot of the others that are out on the market. For the size, it is currently sold in the B5 size only, which personally for me is too big for my own needs. However, I'm not going to fault this bullet journal for being a B5 size. I feel like for this size, it is a very reasonable weight, but because the size is a bit on the larger side, it is less portable or travel friendly unless you have a large purse or handbag or backpack. So this would probably do better just being left at home or at your office or desk rather than being transported back and forth. When it comes to the packaging, as you saw at the beginning of the video, it just comes in very basic shrink wrap. And I feel like this is not very well protected 
and it's not the most ideal packaging, especially because this bullet journal is soft cover. And as a result, there were a lot of imprints and indentations that were present upon arrival, um, not only from the elastic band closure, but also from, I think, just the way this bullet journal is stored in the stock room. So there were various stray, like vertical and horizontal indents um, on both the front and the back covers, which I'm guessing is from this journal being stacked on top of as well as under other journals. So it was just something that I feel like could be improved upon. It's just more protective packaging or wrapping so that the bullet journal isn't damaged before it even arrives to the customer. With that said, I do want to say that the cover is really soft and it feels really nice to hold. It is also very flexible and you could very easily fold the journal back along the spine. The cover does crease, but so far it seems to hold up very well. Um, but I think it'd be interesting to see how much repeated folding would impact the integrity of the cover or the spine. And although this journal does have a soft cover and is very flexible, I do want to point out that it is reinforced by a cardstock type of inner cover that is glued to the back of the covers, um, so that kind of makes it a little bit more sturdier. Uh, the first like real page of this journal is that same cardstock paper. Um, it's, it has like a glossy feel to it and there are a few blank lines at the top. You also have the option to decorate the adjacent blank page. However, that is made of the normal 100 GSM paper and not the sturdier glossy cardstock. There's also the glossy cardstock at the back of the journal and it has space to write your name as well as a return email or phone number in case the journal gets lost, which I think is very standard for bullet journals and journals to include that. However, I think it's very strange that they decided to place that at the back of the journal because I personally would not flip to the back of a journal if I found a lost journal, but there's that. <laughs> um, and then just a minor thing. So I think the cover colors are really fun and they're very vibrant but I think it would also be nice if they offered kind of muted colors or more standard colors like a black or a gray for people who don't want as loud of a color for their journal. When it comes to the paper, it is ivory color and I feel like this is really easy on the eyes without creating too much noticeable difference um, with page color distortion. So I would describe the ivory color as more of like an off-white with a very slight cream color. So it's not bright white, but it's also not as yellow compared to the Leuchtturm 1917 or the Midori MD journals. And overall, I just feel like it's a nice Nice enough white to not create eye strain, but also not so yellow that it would distort any colors you might lay down for your bullet journal. The dots for this bullet journal are also pretty dark and noticeable. So even after uh, photo editing, I noticed that these dots still show up, which it doesn't personally bother me, but this is something that you may want to consider if you are planning to post photos of your bullet journal spreads on social media, because you probably won't get the clean white color um, of your spreads. Like the dots are still going to show up after some photo editing. I also noticed that there is some print quality inconsistency. So the pages are numbered, but I've noticed that some of the numbers seem to be printed much darker on some pages than other pages. And there's also some um, discrepancy between the spacing between the last column of the dots and the edge of the page. Um, this doesn't bother me at all, but I think it's just something important to point out, especially if you want really exact, like calculable, measurable um, spaces or whatever when doing your bullet journal spreads. So just something to keep in mind. When I did the pen test, I tried supplies that I think would be very common to use in bullet journaling or in journaling in general. And honestly, like with the pen test, everything performed as expected since the paper is pretty similar in consistency to standard printer paper. So with all of the supplies, including just a regular ballpoint pen, there was ghosting, but there was no bleed through. However, I feel like bleed through may occur if you're putting down multiple layers of certain types of markers like alcohol markers or Sharpies. But as you could see, on the footage, um, laying down even a few strokes of markers did not seem to bleed through to subsequent pages. There is some paper buckling with the watercolors, which was expected since this paper is not meant for wet media, um, but I had no issues with the paper tearing up with the light washes 
And something to point out is that, yes, this paper is not made for watercolor or any wet media. Um, so don't expect the watercolor to layer up nicely. But I know that some people, especially in the journaling community, do still enjoy kind of that crinkle effect um, created when you use watercolor on regular paper. So there's that. Um, and then just miscellaneous things that came to mind as I was trying out this bullet journal. Um, I had no issues with the lay flat feature and even what was featured in this video um, when I first opened the bullet journal, as you could see, everything was able to lay flat perfectly fine. And I think it definitely helps with the larger size of this bullet journal since the weight of the pages just kind of naturally makes it stay open. Um, the thread bound feature of this journal does make the binding really sturdy and I don't feel like the pages will fall apart so that's a really positive thing. Um, the elastic band closure is pretty standard for bullet journals so there's really nothing to I guess talk much about it um, but again as I'd mentioned because this is a soft cover journal the elastic band does leave an imprint um, on the cover and it does kind of warp the edges a little bit. And then finally, the numbered pages and the index, I think, was a really nice touch, especially because not a lot of bullet journals have this feature. So if you're looking for something that's more organizational, um, maybe consider the Zen Art Bullet Journal since you get the numbered pages and you also have the option to write in the table of contents. So when it comes to the final verdict, so I feel like overall this is a really solid bullet journal for the price. Um, but Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's just going to boil down to your preferences for a bullet journal and what aspects are most important to you. So for example, with the B5 size, I feel like it could go both ways. You have a lot of room to write, but it's at the expense of maybe not being as portable or travel friendly. It's a soft cover, which is not as durable as a hard cover, um, and it may be easily damaged. But with the soft cover, it's definitely more lightweight and it's very flexible. So the soft cover option may not bother you if this is a journal that you're planning to just keep at home or at your desk and not planning to really travel much with it. I think the paper is perfectly fine for journaling um, if you don't mind the ghosting, but you may want to consider a 160 GSM bullet journal if you don't want the ghosting or want to use wet media or maybe you just want really clean bullet journal spreads to post on social media without having to worry about any show through from previous pages. Personally, I don't think I would buy this bullet journal, but it's not because the quality is bad or anything like that. It's mostly because of the B5 size, so as I had mentioned, it's a little bit too big for my own bullet journaling needs. However, I feel like if Zen Art were to eventually create smaller sizes like A5 or even the B6 or B6 Slim, then I would definitely consider this bullet journal. And overall, like, again, it just boils down to what your priorities are when you are looking for a bullet journal to suit your needs. And I think this is a very solid bullet journal. There really wasn't anything that stuck out to me as glaringly negative to the extent that I would not recommend this bullet journal. I think overall, given its features, like it's a very standard bullet journal. It's not like super fancy, like the 160 GSM or anything. Like this is a very good, like everyday bullet journal to consider. And overall, I would recommend it if this is something that you are considering and B5 happens to be a size that you enjoy working with. And so that kind of wraps up everything with this review. Definitely um, do not hesitate to comment down below if you have any questions or concerns. And I'd be more than happy to kind of help you out as best as I can. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And I'll definitely look forward to another video just focusing on the drawing process that was featured in this video. But until then, I hope you guys are staying safe, doing well, and just being healthy. And I will see you guys in the next video.